Today is January the 17th. Today we see Israel in Egypt. Today as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Genesis 45 to 47. Now in Genesis chapter 45, Joseph reveals his identity to his brothers. He's been uh, puzzled by what he should do with his brothers. Does he treat them roughly or does he show them compassion? He decides to show them compassion. He breaks down, he cries, he tells them, I'm Joseph, how is my father? Um, they, uh, the Pharaoh invites Jacob to come and live in Egypt. And so in chapter 46, we have the story of Jacob's journey to Egypt with all of his possessions and with all of his descendants. In uh, chapter 47, Jacob comes before Pharaoh and blesses Pharaoh. For his part, the Pharaoh gives Jacob land on which to live in Egypt. The end of chapter 47 tells us how what Joseph did prospered for Pharaoh. Enjoy today as you read Genesis 45 to 47. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were too many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, Out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset, and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years, and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me master over all the land of Egypt, so come down to me immediately. You can live in the region of Goshen, where you can be near me with all your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and everything you own. I will take care of you there, for there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise, you, your household, and all your animals will starve." Then Joseph added, Look, you can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that I am really Joseph. Go and tell my father of my honored position here in Egypt. Describe for him everything you have seen, and then bring my father here quickly. Weeping with joy, he embraced Benjamin, and Benjamin did the same. Then Joseph kissed each of his brothers and wept over them, and after they began talking freely with him. The news soon reached Pharaoh's palace. Joseph's brothers have arrived. Pharaoh and his officials were all delighted to hear this. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers this is what you must do. Load your pack animals and hurry back to the land of Canaan. Then get your father and all of your families and return here to me. I will give you the very best land in Egypt, and you will eat from the best that the land produces. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, take wagons from the land of Egypt to carry your little children and your wives and bring your father here. Don't worry about your personal belongings, for the best of all of the land of Egypt is yours. So the sons of Jacob did as they were told. Joseph provided them with wagons as Pharaoh had commanded, and he gave them supplies for the journey. And he gave each of them new clothes, but Benjamin he gave five changes of clothes and three hundred pieces of silver. 
He also sent his father ten male donkeys loaded with the finest products of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other supplies he would need on his journey. So Joseph sent his brothers off, and as they left, he called after them, Don't quarrel about all this along the way. And they left Egypt and returned to their father, Jacob, in the land of Canaan. Joseph is still alive, they told him, and he is governor of all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe it. But when they repeated to Jacob everything Joseph had told them, and when he saw the wagons Joseph had sent to carry him, their father's spirit revived. Then Jacob exclaimed, It must be true. My son Joseph is alive. I must go and see him before I die. So Jacob set out for Egypt with all his possessions, and when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go with you down to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. You will die in Egypt, but Joseph will be with you to close your eyes. So Jacob left Beersheba, and his sons took him to Egypt. They carried him and their little ones and their wives in the wagons Pharaoh had provided for them. They also took all their livestock and all their personal belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. So Jacob and his entire family went to Egypt, sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, all his descendants. These are the names of the descendants of Israel, the sons of Jacob, who went to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's oldest son. The sons of Reuben were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jamul, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shal. Shal's mother was a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, though Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hummel. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Shirid, Elon, and Jalil. These were the sons of Leah and Jacob who were born in Paden Aram, in addition to their daughter Dinah. The number of Jacob's descendants, male and female, through Leah was 33. The sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggai, Shunai, Esbon, Arai, Aradai, and Arlai. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah. Their sister was Sira. Uriah's sons were Heber and Machiel. These were the sons of Zilpha, the servant given to Leah by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Zilpha was sixteen. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph's sons born in the land of Egypt were Manasseh and Ephraim. Their mother was Asenath, daughter of Pothithera, the priest of On. Benjamin's sons were Bela, Beker, Ashbel, Gira, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppim, Huppim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel and Jacob. The number of Jacob's descendants through Rachel was fourteen. The son of Dan was Husham. The sons of Naphtali were Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. These were the sons of Bilhah, the servant given to Rachel by their father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Bilhah was seven. The total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went with him to Egypt, not counting his sons' wives, was sixty-six. In addition, Joseph had two sons who were born in Egypt, so altogether there were seventy members of Jacob's family in the land of Egypt. As they neared their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen. And when they finally arrived, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time, Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen your face again, and I know you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and his father's entire family, I will go to Pharaoh and tell him, My brothers and my father's entire family have come to me from the land of Canaan. These men are shepherds, and they raise livestock. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own. Then he said, When Pharaoh calls for you and asks about your occupation, you must tell him, We, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives, as our ancestors have always done. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds.
Then Joseph went to see Pharaoh and told him, My father and my brothers have arrived from the land of Canaan. They have come with all their flocks and herds and possessions, and they are now in the region of Goshen. Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? They replied, We, your servants, are shepherds, just like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt for a while, for there is no pasture for our flocks in Canaan. The famine is very severe, so please we request permission to live in the region of Goshen. Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? They replied, We are your servants. We are shepherds, just like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt for a while, for there is no pasture for our flock in Canaan. The famine is very severe there, so please we request permission to live in the region of Goshen. The Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and brothers have joined you here, choose any place in the entire land of Egypt for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt. Let them live in the region of Goshen. And if any of them have special skills, put them in charge of my livestock too. Then Joseph brought his father, Jacob, and presented him to Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How old are you? Pharaoh asked him. Jacob replied, I have traveled this earth for a 130 hard years, but my life has been short compared to the lives of my ancestors. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh again before leaving his court. So Joseph assigned the best land of Egypt, the region of Ramses, to his father and his brothers, and he settled them there, just as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided food for his father and his brothers in amounts appropriate to the number of their dependents, including the smallest children. Meanwhile, the famine became so severe that all the food was used up, and people were starving throughout the lands of Egypt and Canaan. By selling grain to the people, Joseph eventually collected all the money in Egypt and Canaan, and he put the money in the Pharaoh's treasury. When the people of Egypt and Canaan ran out of money, all the Egyptians came to Joseph. Our money is gone, they cried, but please give us food, or we will die before your very eyes. Joseph replied, Since your money is gone, bring me your livestock. I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they brought their livestock to Joseph in exchange for food. In exchange for their horses, flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and donkeys, Joseph provided them food for another year. But that year ended, and the next year they came again and said, We cannot hide the truth from you, my lord. Our money is gone, and all our livestock and cattle are yours. We have nothing left to give but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your very eyes? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. We offer our land and ourselves as slaves for Pharaoh. Just give us grain so we may live and not die, and so the land does not become empty and desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. All the Egyptians sold him their fields because the famine was so severe, and soon all the lands belonged to Pharaoh. As for the people, he made them all slaves, from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land they did not buy was the land belonging to the priests. They received an allotment of food directly from Pharaoh, so they didn't need to sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Look, today I have bought you and your land for Pharaoh. I will provide you with seed so you can plant the fields. Then when you harvest it, one-fifth of your crop will belong to Pharaoh. You may keep the remaining four-fifths as seed for your fields and as food for you, your households, and your little ones. You have saved our lives, they exclaimed. May it please you, my lord, let us be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph then issued a decree still in effect in the land of Egypt, that Pharaoh should receive one-fifth of all the crops grown on his land. Only the land belonging to the priest was not given to Pharaoh. Meanwhile, the people of Israel settled in the region of Goshen in Egypt. There they acquired property, and they were fruitful, and their population grew rapidly. Jacob lived for 17 years after his arrival in Egypt, so he lived 147 years in all. As the time of his death drew near, Jacob called his son Joseph and said to him, Please do me this favor. Put your hand under my thigh and swear that you will treat me with unfailing love by honoring this last request. 
Do not bury me in Egypt. When I die, please take my body out of Egypt and bury me with my ancestors. So Joseph promised, I will do as you ask. Swear that you will do it, Jacob insisted. So Joseph gave his oath, and Jacob bowed humbly at the head of his bed. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see Joseph die.